Well, now, a new book's been written about the experiences of a zookeeper, but its author also has an extra special connection to London Zoo. Sally has been there to find out all about it. Sally, please tell me more. So, <laughs> when I found out about this book called Jacko, I had to read it, yeah. and honestly, I devoured it. You, I know you're an animal lover, mm. you would love it, Lucrezia. It's about this little boy brought up in the 50s in um, Teddington, and he and his friend find a baby jackdaw, oh. and so they bring it home, <laughs> And it's about how the jackdaw develops. And it's I don't want to spoil anything, but it's just gorgeous. Mm. It is not a normal wild bird. <laughs> You'll absolutely love it. Um, and I met him at London Zoo because it really shaped his life. He ended yeah. up there. Not the bird, but uh, Mick. Let's take a look. You know, he'd perch on my shoulder. He'd, uh, he'd come to you when he saw you. He, he showed a great affection for people. One of the things I didn't like, he, he used to have a habit, he'd sit on your shoulder, he'd put his beak down your ear, <laughs> and that was very unnerving, so I wasn't very keen on that bit of you. But everything else about him was perfect, because Jacko the Jackdaw was more than a bird. He was a friend and a little London legend whose story began back in 1957. One day we were walking through Bushy Park, coming home, and uh, we suddenly saw this bird on the floor, and we thought, well, that, you know, unusual. And it was obvious as we got closer he was injured, he had a damaged wing, and it was obvious he was a baby. So, so Mick took him back to his home, the Railway Hotel in Teddington. My dad sort of straight away said, oh, we'll look after him. My mum was, oh, not another animal. <laughs> um, they nursed him back to health. But when they tried to set him free, the most extraordinary thing happened. He just wouldn't leave us. <laughs> this was the point. He said, no, nope, I like it here, I'm staying. <laughs> Jacko also loved trains and became a local celebrity, but he also had a fondness for the pub. They used to play cribbage a lot in the yeah, pub, yeah. in the public bar. He would uh, nick, nick the cards. <laughs> He'd land on the table and then just grab a card and someone would have a good hand and go, oh, that's the end of my hand. That's brilliant. What a monkey. <laughs> oh, what, oh, what a, a monkey. Bird. <laughs> yeah, what a bird, yeah. It's perhaps inevitable that Mick would end up working with animals. He applied to London Zoo and eventually became head keeper of the primates, including Lucy. But it was in retirement that the story of Jacko resurfaced when his neighbour, the award-winning children's author, Jean Willis, fell in love with the tale. As an author, you've got to think up your own plot. And, yeah. You know, we're all a bit lazy. And suddenly I was handed this gorgeous story on a plate. Perfect. So, you know, I'm extremely grateful uh, to Mick. How much affinity have you got for that little bird? Oh, I just love him. The book, named after Jacko, tells the wonderful adventures of this little fella and how lucky London and Mick were to know him. He was a wonderful, wonderful animal. Everyone who met him loved him. Sal, this little bird thought he was human. I know, and he preferred <laughs> walking to flying, isn't that brilliant? But the other lovely thing about Mick was he told me this great story about when he looked after the primates mm. at London Zoo. Occasionally, if they were looking after them, he'd have to feed them at ha by hand at home, so he'd have to take them home on yeah. the bus. Isn't oh that amazing? Goodness. Imagine a gorilla on the bus. Anyway, <laughs> here's the weather.